Hello everyone and welcome to episode 59 of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone to play the games you have. It's great to grow your collection, but remember to play the games you already have in your collection. I'm doing these streams and these videos because I have an extensive collection that I really haven't touched in almost 15 years. Try not to collect these games simply for the sake of collecting. They were made to be played, so I think it's best if everyone just plays them. I just want to add that if you enjoy retro gaming, or as I'm calling this, legacy gaming, and videos like this, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm very active on all three platforms under the name AtariMan71. On this episode, I'm going to feature four games which were published by Absolute Entertainment, and I'm going to be playing Super Skateboarding, Pete Rose Baseball, and Tomcat F-14 Flight Simulator. And I'm also going to feature uh, a little bit from Title Match Pro Wrestling. I played that previously when I was playing the Activision games, so I'm just going to show it here. So the first game I have on my list is Title Match Pro Wrestling. And I will put that in my Atari. Turn on my video capture card. And turn it in. Okay. So I will call up my information on, at, on this game. So, Title Match Pro Wrestling is cartridge AG-041. It was released in 1987, and it uses a joystick controller. And, as usual, I have my Wiko Command controller. Uh, I played this game during my Activision games, and uh, but I, I wanted to show it again here because Absolute Entertainment, I believe, is the original publisher of this game. Absolute was formed by former Activision employees, and I'm guessing they took so, some of the code with them when they left. You'll see that uh, all the games that I'm playing today have act. Excuse me. All the games I'm playing today have Activision cartridge numbers. So VGR ratings for this game: the graphics were rated five for excellent, and the playability was four for fun. And I'm going to pull the instructions up for myself so that I know the moves. Put that over here on the side, and I'll do a pop-out windowed projector preview. See how this works for me. So I can minimize that, yeah, that's great. That's great, that's the way to play. Okay, so. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to get my windows set up so that I can practice some stuff. So I'll practice first since I haven't played this in a minute, and then we'll go into these other modes. So I'm just going to hit Game Reset. Okay, so I'm Mad Dog. So... Okay, so, yeah, up is punch, down is kick, that's a silly kick. Um, this is bear hug, and then I can drag him around the ring, right? And then I can do a canvas slam, and then you can pick him up off the mat. That's something I didn't know before. Power lift. And then airplane spin. Boy, he's out. Picked him up. So we're towards opponent airplane spin. Away from opponent, let him go. So... We power lift him. Well, maybe that you have to have him. 
so Can't pick them up off the canvas. Up on the ropes. Oh, this is not my active window, that's why I won't scroll. Uh up on the ropes. Walk around the ropes, left and right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And then rope dive is up there. Okay, so I pinned him. Oh, you can practice with different guys. That's interesting. So then, all right, so I want to try the helicopter. Ah. That's the helicopter. Okay. Up on the ropes. So that's a slam. Alright, I'm going to do a backdrop. That's a backdrop? That's the same as a... Oh, up is the backdrop. That's that's a backdrop. Okay, so it's interesting. I'll uh, I'll play it. I'll play it a little more. Uh, see if I remember those moves. Here. Sorry. Just getting everything situated again. Okay. So, game three, I believe. Let me see for sure. It was me versus the computer one on one. It's all the way at the top of the instructions. Uh, my keyboard here. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one computer wrestler you against the computer. Be easier just to slide this down to these moves. Because I for sure am not going to remember these moves. Okay, so I'm going to be Mr. Bean. It's tough. I don't even know how to get up. He pinned me in like two seconds. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. 
I suppose if you spend a lot more time in this game... So that's title match pro wrestling. I'm not going to do any more of this because this game is just kind of ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to shut that off. Take that out. So the next game on my list is whoops, Super Skateboarding. Here you see my cartridge for that. Let's throw that in the system. Turn it on. Yeah, that little blip is because I have that PAL converter in. I'll take that out after today because I'm not going to play any more PAL games for a while. Um, so I'll pull up my information on this game. So, Super Skateboarding is cartridge AG-042. It was released in 1987. And I just started playing this game recently, even though I've had this for almost 20 years. I, I didn't even ever play it from before on an emulator, and I kind of regret that. The game is written by the legendary David Crane. And this is actually a pretty fun game, and I would recommend picking up a copy if you have a chance. But I have to warn you, the background music kind of gets stuck in your head. You know, it's not the best music, but it, you know, I can hear it right now. It's just this weird little drum beat. You know, it's just a weird sound. It's you, you'll, you'll hear it. So um, in the game, you have to successfully locate and negotiate 30, 30 hidden tricks in the form of ramps, pipes, and uh, there's a time limit of five minutes. You're basically on your way to school, but you're still wanting to skateboard. Um, to save time, you can uh, grab onto the back of a vehicle and have it like slingshot you. I think it's called skitching. I, I never heard that before, but it sh makes you go flying super high speed. Um, I have trouble controlling this game just at regular speed, so... I've never tried that. Um, the fire button makes you either jump, which is necessary to get on the skateboard, or to avoid some of the obstacles in the game. Um, there's like uh, construction horses or whatever you call those things, the old school before the barrels. Um, there's those, and you got to jump jump over them. Um, Things like that. But if you continue to hold the button down, you actually crouch. And you have to do that to get through the pipes. There's pipes you need to go through. And then, uh, you know, th there's an additional challenge of how quick can you get this all done. Some people, some people have reportedly done it, you know, with tons of extra time. I have a hard time figuring it out, you know, but... Uh, you know, I can I can play, and it's actually kind of fun, like I said. So, VGR's ratings for this game, the graphics are rated 4 for good, and the playability is 5 for irresistible. Alright, so here we have the game. I'm going to get situated here. My joystick. I'll reset the game. So now you see there's 30 obstacles, so... Yeah, I'm terrible.
and I'm walking this far. Determined to get one more. I didn't even get up to the road. I'll reset it and I'll show you the road at least. There's obviously a pattern to take here that I just don't know.
come on. So now I'm not going to focus on doing the tricks. I'm going to focus on showing you the... Uh, So here's the road. There we go. That's it, the truck pulls you automatically. I think I had it there for a second. Try this again. It's interesting you can't get killed though. get on your board as the trucks So that's super skateboarding. There's really not a lot to it. There's no games to select. There's just that game and you got to get 30, 30 tricks. Um, you know, I, I, it's kind of fun. Um, they say it's irresistible. Eh, I don't know, but it is kind of fun. So that's it. I'll call, call it for that. The next game I, I'm, I have on my list is Pete Rose Baseball, and this is actually out of Australia. This is an Australian copy of the game, and it's PAL as a result, but I have my converter in here. The colors are not going to be right, and you'll see that right away, um, but the game is playable. So this is just the demo right here. So I will call up my information on this game. So, Pete Rose Baseball is cartridge AK-045. It was released in 1988, and it uses a joystick controller. And, you know, I am not the best at sports games for the Atari 2600, and this game is no exception. The controller, you know, makes it difficult, you know. 
later games had two to three buttons and multiple bumpers and things like that. You can control all you had to do. In this, they had to work it out with the joystick so that they cut the field into different camera areas. And so when the, when the game went into section A, there were only four players, so you, you know, you could use the joystick. The thing is, the players aren't free to move around that whole field of view. They're limited in how far they can come in or go out. And so it's, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to get it to show. And that's probably because the whole way that the Atari works is the screen shows four players, but they're all one thing in the computer and it draws it in four positions. And those positions cannot overlap, otherwise there's the flicker that happened in Pac-Man for the ghosts and things like that. So anyway, um, the controller just doesn't lend itself to the complexity of sports. This game is played from the viewpoint of behind the pitcher, but the scenery changes when the ball is hit, and it goes to the section of the field where the ball is going. I've not really played this game that much because it was a PAL cartridge, even though I've had it for 20 years. I wouldn't be good at it anyway, even if I was able to play it, uh, because I'm not really that good at Atari sports games. Granted, I had fun playing them, but I'm just not that good. Um, so, I will try to, to play this and showcase a little bit of the gameplay, but I can't promise um, that I'm going to that I'm going to do very well. Um, but I'll try to make a game of it, but no guarantees. So I'll reset it and see if we can play on this breast cancer awareness field. So I'm batting. No, I'm not batting. I'm pitching. Okay, so push up. Push button, push up. Now he's got a fly ball. Okay. So, what I like to do is do like this. Push up. And then throw back across... Uh, come on. Who's got the damn ball? Where is the ball? Oh. It's kind of hard to see in this little screen. Alright. So, up for speed. And then a curveball. Is it? All right. Foul ball. Um, I'm gonna do a pop out because this is actually it's so small. It's kind of... That's better. I'll see a little better on this. I have a full screen now. All right. Fast pitch. Ball inside. Base is loaded. Come on. Grand slam. Oh, no. That was a grand slam. I shouldn't have given up. Come on. Where's the ball?
it's actually very difficult for me to see this ball in this field. Um, it's better on the emulator. So slow pitch. Boy, this is crazy. See, that's the thing. The second baseman can't come to it. You got to use the third baseman to get that ball right in front of the second baseman. And that's kind of ridiculous. I guess I could use the pitcher. Base is loaded again. See, the thing that's different about this is you can't try to cut the corners and stuff like that. Oh, come on. player to get that with is the second baseman. Actually, it's the shortstop there, not the second baseman. As long as that ball takes to come in, I guess they're slow too. Before I was able to field a little bit, but with this pink field it kind of is difficult. I'm trying to find a new PAL conversion box that actually corrects the colors too, but right now, because I have quite a few PAL.
Come on. Pitcher can't even go back there. It's the third baseman that has to go get it. You see how terribly I hit. Three up, three down. Did I do anything? to see the ball. Well, that's it. I'm going to I'm going to call it quits after an inning cuz I didn't make any contact and he's going to just score another 20 runs. So, I call slaughter rule. Um that's it for Pete Rose baseball. Like I said, I'm not that great in these Atari sports games. I just and especially this one because it's PAL. I played it on emulation for practice. And uh, I was able to see the ball a lot better. And did a little better than that. I mean, I, I still didn't do well, but I did a little better. So the last game I have is Tomcat F-14 Flight Simulator. This is also a PAL cartridge. So the colors are going to be off a little bit. The water is green instead of blue. But... I don't think it matters that much. So I will call up my information on this game. So Tomcat F-14 Flight Simulator is cartridge AK-046. It was released in 1988. And it uses the joystick controller as well as the console. So. This game is kind of like Space Shuttle in that regard. To me, it's amazing that this game was developed for the Atari 2600. It's simply amazing for the hardware that it's running and be able to do what it does. is It's kind of incredible. I was a fan of the game Afterburner in the arcade, and this is similar in gameplay. I was also a fan of Top Gun for the NES, and this also has similar gameplay. It's almost like the goal was to say, hey, Nintendo, we have this old system that we we made from 1977, and it can play those kind of games too. You're not doing anything unique. But the truth is, Nintendo had taken over, and Atari was done. I mean, after after the 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 bad series of games that came out, it just kind of devastated Atari, and it, it maybe. Um, wasn't as bad in Europe and other places around the world, but in the United States, they had really um, done themselves in. So in this game, you fly and you fly seek and destroy missions while dodging and gunning enemy planes in deadly dogfights with your 20 millimeter cannon and air-to-air -air missiles. The cockpit comes with a display and main computer, a bogey alert indicator, a G-force indicator, electronic countermeasures, cannon overheat indicator. Yes, they will overheat, and you can fly as fast as Mach 1 in, in the plane. 
The gameplay consists of taking off flying, combat, and landing. Most of the gameplay focuses around the dogfighting with the enemies. In addition to that, there are night missions that add to the difficulty because there's limited vision. Takeoff and landing requires additional skin skill. <laughs> You'll need to pay attention to the, the officer on deck as you are preparing to take off. Your weaponry consists of an M61 machine gun and three different aim missiles, 7, 9, and 54, each packed with 15 missiles. So that's 45 missiles that you carry. I don't know that that's possible. I know F-14s carry a lot, but 45 seems extravagant. Uh, each mission you will receive a rating based on your flying skill and the number of kills and the weapons you fire. This is an amazingly complex game for the 2600. VGR ratings, the game is not rated. And I admit that I didn't practice it that much just because it is so complex. I had to constantly go back and refer to the instructions, and I will be doing that again today because there's so much stuff you need to do. And, you know, you can't... Maybe if you played it for a long time, you remember what to do. But, uh, you know, I played Space Shuttle in the past, and I still had to look over the manual while I was flying. And I was thinking I was going to make, like, a little template up, you know, or post-it notes or something, just to remind me, this difficulty switch is the landing gear, and this difficulty switch is the... And I'm going to... I'm going to try to use the instructions while playing again, so I'm going to make my pop-out window. We'll size that appropriately. And I'll call up my instructions again. Oh, baseball. Okay. Just flying is kind of crazy. Okay, so let's let's see if we can get this sucker to take off. Okay. All right, I'm going to hit reset. All right, it fills you up with fuel first. Once you're full on fuel. Okay, I'm full on fuel. So now I got to throttle up. The full afterburn. He's telling me to continue to throttle up. That's a stall warning. You need to pull up. I did. But apparently my rating is zero, which is terrible. Like I said, this is a difficult game to play. Let's try it again. Speed, gain some altitude. All right, we're at 1,000 feet. I'm climbing. Pitch. It's a 
died. So now I'm at zero, so I'm gonna throttle back. So there I see a bank. So we are in the air. And it holds, it doesn't return to flat, which is kind of cool. And you see the. So I'm going to pull the. That's down. The landing gear is up now. Right? both up. Okay, so I'm launched. I'm at 2,000 feet. Okay, so select will switch the main computer display. Here's my armaments. The AIM 54s are ready. Burning through fuel. Okay. Okay. So I need to get up to 5,000 feet to uh, compete in combat. So this is basically getting me used to flying the plane. You know, it's actually not too bad. You see the G-forces. Zero G's is interesting. Zero additional G's? Alright, so I'm gonna pull back on the stick. See how quickly we can get up to 5,000 feet and then level out. Okay, so here's a bad guy. You see him on the uh, radar over there. There he is. Hey, got a kill. Come on. Dang it. I can't. Well, you can't pull a full loop in, the, in this plane. Ah. 
I don't know where the bad guy is. I see nothing on my radar. Sorry, there's a glare on my computer screen. There he is. He's probably behind me. What if you can do a mid-air collision? Um... Turn my ECMs on. How do I turn my ECMs on? So I'm going to switch to... Machine guns. Find this guy, because... Got me goose. Rating zero. I shot one guy down and got shot down. I fired four missiles. That's the problem. But some of them are just unnecessary. All right. Try it again. Fueling up. So I broke Mach 1, that was that little burp sound. Okay, so... The missiles are ready. Turn my countermeasures on. Even though they didn't work for me. Maybe I have to deploy them. Okay. Okay. Everything looks good. So I'm going to pull back on my stick and get up to 5,000 feet.
Christ, I shot a missile again. I forgot to slow down. But here you see, like Space Shuttle, you can change through your weapons and throttles and all sorts of stuff. Man, I'm burning up fuel quick. Because he's like zero feet and then he's like 300 feet. Like, I think the guy is directly on my tail. I'll pass him. Mach 2. Almost out of fuel. I think if I burn out of fuel, they're going to pull me back to the ship. bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. Zero. <laughs> Try one more time, and then I'll call it a night. I just want to burn all the fuel out so that it tells me to... I'm just going to take off, and I'm going to fly under 5,000.
Yeah, I'll burn through fuel with it. I'll do that. Leave it in. Let's see if it lets me try to land. I've never tried to land, so let me in read the instructions on the landing. Like I said, this is a very complicated game for an Atari. It's kind of amazing that it even works. Alright, landing. When you are running low on fuel or have used up most of your available, you will be called back to the aircraft carrier. The landing screen will appear on your main computer display showing your speed altitude range in the carrier and your angle of attack along with the automobile. So I'm just going to bang. I'm going to start banging. Press the select button until Stats 2 screen appears on your computer display. Oh, it's already there. To land, you must bring your compass heading to approximately 30 degrees. at night time. So, put the hook on, put the landing gear down, and do the stats too. So I'm entered the landing corridor. So angle of attack. Is that the aircraft carrier?
Hmm. Okay. Well, that's Tomcat F-14 Flight Simulator. I've never tried to land before, so that was my first attempt. But I, I'm reading over the instructions. I don't think I did anything wrong. I just crashed. Maybe I was going too fast because I... My speed was way up there. I dropped below Mach 1, though, so I don't know. Um, maybe I'll practice it and do another video after I get this new adapter. If, if in fact, it is available and does ship. And I ordered one earlier today, and they said, Oh, this has been discontinued. It's out of stock. It was kind of a little place that probably holds zero stock in the equipment. And uh, they're like, and we can't get it anymore. So I said, Okay. So I found another company that sold the same thing. Um, different company produced it. And so um, hoping that they have it, that they won't cancel the order as well. So um, it wasn't cheap, but they say it color corrects. It, it not only corrects the picture, but it color corrects as well. And that's that's the thing that I've been you know, struggling to find is something that puts the correct colors on the screen to play pal games um and i have quite an extensive collection of pal games i got a lot of uh different german games and stuff like that so basically that's my stream for today i hope you enjoyed watching it i know i'm not the best gamer out there but i'm trying to bring you some information and some gameplay from my extensive collection i'd like to remind everyone that even though we may be through the worst part of the pandemic i want you to be healthy and stay safe and I think it's still a good idea to wash your hands and social distance. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me play these games today. I stream on Twitch Friday, Saturday, and Sunday under the name of Man 71 The videos from the stream are then released on YouTube the following week, Monday through Friday. And I will be streaming again tomorrow with three new games. Thank you and have a great day.